Hey, and we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. Today, we're talking about Modern Warfare 2. And yes, we're just talking about the campaign right now because it is technically available before the full game release. Like the full game with the multiplayer and everything else drops October 28th, but the campaign has been playable if you digitally pre-order the game. Now, I'm not one to ever pre-order or recommend pre-ordering, really, I don't do it. But for the sake of checking this out, they are asking for your money, so we wanted to tell you what's up. They're fun to talk about, and I don't know how much we can really provide with the multiplayer at this point other than what we've said in the past. We here actually like playing all of the Call of Duty campaigns. I've played through every single one since Call of Duty 2. I'm not like this like diehard Call of Duty campaign fan or anything, but I always just thought they were like short burst, fun, playable, crazy action movies. So they're all over the place. Like some are like playable war movies. Some are crazy Michael Bay style action sequences. Some are zany and sci-fi. Some are even a little bit mysterious and cerebral. You know, they all have had their ups and downs and we were looking forward to checking this one out because it's the follow-up to Modern Warfare 2019's campaign. One that I found pretty cool and different that gave us kind of uh, freshened up gameplay sequences and new takes on the old classic Modern Warfare characters. Uh, it was a bit more real and a bit more raw, a bit more low key, and it had some good emotions behind it. Now, this sequel, Modern Warfare 2, doubles down on a lot of those slow paced entertaining, more tactical encounters that I thought were really cool in the first game. I mean, we all remember from 2019, uh, slowly creeping through that London flat with the night vision goggles, slowly taking out each enemy. Everything felt really realistic. The tension was high, the lighting was incredible. And Modern Warfare 2 kind of just embraces that whole thing, that whole style of play. There's a pretty good split between the occasional run and gun moment and the more fun, linear, cinematic shootout or stealth sequence. It definitely stumbles in some spots, especially where it tries to go a little crazier than usual. It kind of falls flat next to some of the crazier moments in the old Modern Warfare games. But still, long story short, I think it's an okay playthrough with some problems here and there. You know, I don't think it feels quite as watertight as the 2019 campaign, but it seems like I might be in the minority here. Still, again, it's just an entertaining thing to play through. It's kind of a slow burn, but I thought the payoff by the end the, like, the last few missions was worth it. Oh, and I should have said this already, but just so you know, this footage was all captured on PS5 and it is spoiler free. So at the start of this, you're full blown Task Force 141. Soap, Gaz, Ghost, in all their glory. They, alongside with Price, uh, they get their moments. Although Gaz was a little bit to the wayside, I guess, because they spent more time on him in the first game. Uh, Ghost, they really made like a proper sicko with some subtle dialogue and I like it. I think fans are gonna be happy. Also, Alejandro and Rodolfo are new characters introduced from the start of the Mexico section that stick with you through the whole game and they're Mexican special forces. And Alejandro in particular is like pretty badass and like this ever man way. He's just really cool. They're just likable characters. I don't know. He managed to stand out amongst the established characters that fans already know. Now, this team is quickly thrust into a new situation and a new bad guy, uh, once again working with CIA agent Kate Laswell, though it's more politically complicated at times thanks to the powers that be in Washington, mainly the new General Shepard. Now, you're thrust into a big variety of situations here. You gotta give the game that. Like, at one point, you're in Mexico hunting terrorists, and then you're getting caught up with infiltrating a cartel leader's mansion. Then you're running over the border and literally running through American streets. Then you're doing like a classic ghillie suit style stealth mission in sprawling fields in Spain, uh, a trip through Amsterdam, and of course, a quick obligatory stop to uh, some places in the Middle East. Now, some missions are downright incredible, like a run through a neighborhood that I mentioned before, shooting cartel bad guys, uh, a big shootout where you're working your way down a mountain and stopping to turn back and fire up at pursuing enemies and uh, a cargo ship in the rain mission that managed to be awesome, despite the Call of Duty series already doing a cargo ship or cargo ship in the rain mission quite a few times. It's got a couple ones that fell flat for me though, uh, a forced stealth section where you're wounded and are being hunted by these elite forces. So you gotta craft makeshift weapons with a randomly introduced crafting system out of nowhere. It seems really cool on paper, but I found it kind of annoying and awkward to play through. 
true. It just killed the momentum, and not in a way like a good stealth section would, you know? Along with that, they attempted a driving scene where you're driving and also hanging out of the car and shooting. That actually controlled pretty well. Uh, it all was kind of cool until it introduces you to uh, needing to climb out and jump onto other cars. It made a cool, simple action mission a bit tedious because the jumping felt so out of whack and it caused you to restart multiple times, like a lot, and it just kind of killed the excitement. You know, it ruins what would have otherwise have been a cool, action-packed moment in this mission. In this new, more subdued modern warfare world, like, they still managed to go a little bit bigger. There's a part where you're hanging upside down from a helicopter shooting dudes and dodging cars on that same highway. That was a pretty incredible moment, and it felt like they were trying to get back a little bit at, like, the downhill snowmobile chases with Uzis from the old games. Just crazy shit. It only does that once in a while, though. Most of the game is really chill. Now, I respect the game for not having a ton of massive scale shootouts. Like, I love that the game embraces clearing rooms and taking things slow and carefully here and there because it's straight up not really what Call of Duty is usually about. So I'm glad this kind of, uh, you know, bucks the trend a little bit. And this second campaign continues that whole thing. There are some tense, challenging moments here. And thankfully, like usual, uh, plenty of difficulty modes to ramp it up with. Uh, when the action and the regular Call of Duty shooting stuff ramps up, it's solid of course, because these games play so well. They're like a well-oiled and fine-tuned machine at this point. You know, moving, aiming, shooting, all is lightning quick to your reflexes. It's super responsive and smooth, and the sound effects, the recoil, and the hit feedback all fall into that perfect sweet spot for like a twitchy shooter like this. We talked about Call of Duty games so much in the past, like I don't really know how much more I can explain that part of it. Now, unfortunately, the game can be pretty buggy though. Uh, you know, probably one of the glitchier Call of Duty campaigns in a while that I've seen. Uh, I've seen a few background characters have weird faces like with their teeth popping out, a lot of texture pop in, a few characters clip. I saw some T poses and unfortunately, I had some hard crashes where the entire game shut down, like totally died, closed out back to the console's home screen. One really bad one was the second to last mission towards the very end of the game. It would crash really hard every time after a specific checkpoint. I had to actually start the whole long mission over again. Nothing else I tried worked. So yeah, uh, despite those issues, visually at least, the game does look insane. This newer Call of Duty engine makes all the difference. The game looks great, but also has the frame rate to back up that fast action. Characters move and look convincingly real thanks to some great faces, but also some damn good lighting. The night scenes look incredible still, pitch black sometimes, and when an explosion lights up an empty dark field, it looks really good. You've also seen on screen here, uh, this brief Amsterdam mission looks absolutely crazy. They did it with Piccadilly in 2019, and here they've recreated a slice of a famous city, and like, it's jaw-dropping. Like, I actually just wish this mission was longer here because it felt like just a tease. Now, where I say it kind of feels like a slow burn is because uh, the stakes don't feel too high. It's just a bunch of dudes doing their job another day in this soldier life, which makes things feel a bit boring sometimes. Some people might want that. It, it definitely seems like people are really thinking this campaign is way more exciting. For me though, I don't know. I, there's the ghillie suit mission, but it's kind of been there, done that. There's a big gunship mission and it's been there, done that. You know, good for variety, absolutely. There's a lot of different things to do in this campaign, but nothing mind blowing throughout, especially plot wise. Most of the Time, I didn't really care too much about what was going on until eventually it ramps up with like the last uh, three, uh, two missions and that's fine, I guess. Like the game actually felt kind of like an in-between one, like in a trilogy. Like this is the one where they're just doing their thing, eh, whatever. But then thankfully by the end, I get why it was that bit of a slow burn and it clicked. It really is setting up seemingly a trilogy or a, a bunch of games. And I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes because it set up some cool stuff. So I'd say to see through it to the end, you know, it's only like six hours. Is pretty standard what you'd expect for a Call of Duty, but it did feel a little bit on the shorter end compared to some other ones. Uh, you know, is it enough to justify the $70 price tag? No, dude, I don't think so, but that's usually the case here, man. Call of Duty is just like a package deal, and we're only talking about one aspect, the one we like the most, the thing we like to talk about the most, so there you have it. It's just another fun, interactive, playable action movie thing that people often ignore for the multiplayer, but like a bunch of people made this, they worked hard on this, and it's a little bit more low-key than other games, but in some ways I kind of 
I respected it for keeping it slow and simple, you know? That's where I'm at. That's a before you buy. You know how this goes by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion. And I had a lot of personal opinion. I'm all over on this one. So uh, I want to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments what you think about the campaign. If you're excited enough, chances are you probably played through it already. So hit us up. Who's your favorite character? Do you think they did ghost justice? I think they did with some of the dialogue moments during that soap stealth section. He just sounded cool. But hey, let's talk anything Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 down in the comments. Well, let's talk about the old one too, if you want. Anything at all, hit us up. If this video helped you out, showed you some gameplay, informed you of your purchase, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. It helps us out. But thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you guys next time. Are we clear? For now, we gotta move. Go. You know these trails? Very well. But so does the army. We can't hold off an army. We need extraction. Rodriguez.